What's up, guys? So thank you so much for joining us for another episode of Spotlight. We are here with Aditya, and he is all the way from New Delhi today. How are you doing? All good. Thank you so much, Sydney, for having me. Hope you are uh, safe, taking taking care of yourself. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Yeah. So Aditya and I met away because we were um, both um, investor panel judges for a really really big startup competition that took place in India. It was on uh, virtual Zoom, and um, I know that we both had a, a lot of great experiences just meeting all these really interesting founders and hearing all these great pitches. So how did you find uh, that experience with ten thousand startups? It was a good event, Sydney. Uh, uh, the experience that, of course, early stage founders give us is something impeccable, right? Because we know about their journeys, know about what motivates them to start the, the, the founders, and particularly in India and most of the places abroad, early stage founders just start with passion and everything follows the rest, right? So very, very good to be there. And uh, a lot of, uh, uh, of course, connects with people like you from across the borders, where we can bridge this gap of the community and bring bring a closer community together. So an enriching experience overall. Yeah, I was especially interested to see that there were investors from all different hemispheres of the of the world. So it was so cool to to be able to be a part of that, and would love to do something like that again, hopefully with you um, by by our side. So um, yeah, speaking of that, it was also my first experience, kind of seeing how different startups from uh, different communities and economies and and geographies are doing in terms of what they are experiencing, how they're going through COVID and their own experiences as a startup founder and uh, what the different trends are like where they live. So where you live um, in India, is there parts of the startup trends that you think that maybe North Americans haven't discovered or don't know about the Indian startup scene that you'd like to share or something maybe we can learn from as well? Startups are the recent fad in India, right? Because of course, we've been primarily driven by uh, uh, the middle class economy, which is focusing more on government jobs or focusing more on safe and secure uh, uh, sources of income and livelihood, right? And entrepreneurship is something that, of course, gives you that adrenaline rush, right? And Indians are not the best risk takers when it comes to taking risk. So, so we like to be safe and secure every time. So it's a new, new recent fad. Um, Indian economy is a transition economy compared to the other economies in the world. And uh, uh, we started with, uh, when, I, when I started my investing journey, we had just about 10,000 startups, uh, in fact, uh, in, in India. And now we have grown to about uh, uh, 70,000 plus startups uh, across the nooks and uh, corners of the country. So it's, it's a good growth. And uh, we, are, we are constantly uh, driving. But innovation is something that, of course, we need to focus more on rather than imitating other business models, models or the Ubers or the, uh, uh, the Airbnbs of the world. So new innovation should, should come up and should, should drive the global scene. That is a very interesting thing that you brought up about conservatism and you know being more risk adverse, which is a much more cultural thing. And so then in your experiences, how do um, Indian founders kind of do that shift in mindset? Because you know where I'm coming from in uh, Silicon Valley in North America here, it's very huge appetite for risk and you know huge failure first culture. So how do um, people in India kind of take that step into entrepreneurship and into that kind of unknown? Uh, that's 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 the thing, right? Uh, in India, it's all about the mindset. Matlab, it, everywhere, it's all about the mindset, right? If you have the mindset to become an entrepreneur, I guess fifty percent you are there because half the battle is won in your head, right? The rest fifty percent is execution. So what we have to do is create that culture of risk taking more in India, where we celebrate risk, where we celebrate failures, and we celebrate people who come out and do the extraordinary, right? So that is something which is very well practiced across uh, around the world. But in India, since, as I said, the mentality is as such that um, India, in India, academics is something that is given a lot of focus on, a lot of impetus on right from beginning. So even from childhood, as the child is growing on, um, the, the, the occupation is decided sometimes uh, of the child that what, what would they want to do by the parents. So, so that is something that we need to come ahead, take more risk, and um, celebrate risk more. Uh, a classic case, even in, in the investing world that I see, Sydney, is that in Silicon Valley um, or the, the best hotspots uh, in Hong Kong and the other places, the hotspots of startup around the world, 
seed investing is generally given on idea stage as well, right? While in India, people want a lot of traction before, a lot of validation, traction and market research, proof of concept before they can even actually give a check. So there's a, there's a common saying uh, that we, we have in, in our investor circle in India that in Silicon Valley, it takes one coffee for you to get a check. Here in India, you, here in India, you take about 10 coffees plus a, 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 a buffet over that. I love that it takes 10 coffees and a buffet. That is, <laughs> that is so beautiful. I, I'm going to use that too. Um, so in terms of the uh, FAD network, which is, which is your company, I know that you do a lot of stress in the fact that it's a network as opposed to a typical angel fund. So why don't you explain why that is so important that it's, it's more of a network for, for you guys? In investing generally, um, people fail to realize that even investor networks are sometimes startups, right? Because they have the same proposition. They have to get the best founders. They have to do their research of the market. They have to build technology to streamline things. And then they have to place risk as well, right? So we are also startup founders. And um, it takes, it takes uh, uh, it's a general principle of investing that whenever you get a check from someone, not only you're getting the check, but you're also getting the trust which is not written in the checkbook, but it is always an intangible asset that you get along with money, right? And that trust is very, very important in any financial transaction. So FAD was recently started, uh, as in we, we began our journey in 2015, we were not doing investments back then. We were running an accelerator uh, at that time. Uh, we were helping startups with everything. In 2017, we realized that startups would want everything and anything under the world, right? They would want funding, they would want co-founders, they would want everything, right? So we can't be the uh, masters of everything, right? We have to pick one line of service and make it our best, right? And that's what we say to our startups as well, that pick one product that you want to focus on and make it your champion product. Mm -hmm. So we made it, we picked up investments and then of course the, the journey started up and we did five investments in about two years and then we had built a lot of network uh, with that. So with that network, what we said that the network is very fragmented and distributed, right? I know investor A at some part in India. I know investor B at some other part in India. But how can I bridge investor A and investor B so that they can not only share their thesis, but also collectively invest in the startup at a lightning quick pace. And that's when we created this network, wherein, of course, we are bridging investors from everywhere and uh, creating that trust, that intangible asset uh, by backing more early stage companies. So from that five Sydney, we have grown to about 25 companies in, on, in just one year, right? And we've been very actively and aggressively investing. And the next step that, that we have, of course, is the fund, right? Wherein we have won the trust of that investors. Uh, we have shown our track record, our portfolio growth. And now we can go ahead and take money from them and create our own fund. So that's the next thing in the, in ne the next chink in the armor. Oh, that's perfect. And so um, lastly, I know that we did talk a little bit about this before the interview, that you just had a festival, Diwali. So tell us about what this festival is and how you and your family celebrate it normally. Do you guys have any special traditions or rituals? So Diwali is the Diwali or Deepavali as it's most commonly called in India. It's a festival where uh, mythology, I'll just quickly state one line that why is it celebrated? So there is a mythological character in India called Lord Ram who of course went to exile for 14 years just to fulfill his father's wish uh, and left everything aside. He was a king. He was a, he was a king of a very big empire. But just to fulfill his father's wish um, uh, that his father has, had given to uh, her mother, uh, he went into exile. So Diwali celebrated when uh, Lord Ram defeats an evil uh, in his journey and comes back to his home, his empire after 14 years. So that's why Diwali is called Festival of Lights, where we say that lightness prevails over darkness and lightness dis dispels darkness, right? And that's why we celebrate, we celebrate it with diyas, lighted candles, uh, lighted pots, lighted uh, small, small diyas, wherein we eradicate darkness and bring in light. So that's, that's how we, that's how way we celebrate. So I celebrate uh, by wearing my traditional clothes. Uh, Indian clothes and we go to temples, uh, we, we praise the gods and of course we come home and yeah, we, we celebrate with, with family. We have lots of sweets. In fact, <laughs> I have a sweet with myself. So India is known for uh, a lot of sweets. So yeah, we, we eat every, every sweet that we get, get from our guests. <laughs> <laughs>
Oh, that is, that is beautiful. And what a great uh, thing that I think we can all take a page from today, which is to see the light in the darkness, especially in 2020. So um, a great way to, to lead into the new year, right? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Perfect. Well, thank you so much and uh, for, for sharing that. And, and it's beautiful and it's personal. And um, now we're going to play a little game to get to know you a little bit more. So I asked you at the beginning to take out two pieces of paper, which I know you have now. And so we have our two pieces of paper. So on either paper, just write one truth and one lie, okay? It could be any order, but something that's true about yourself and something that's a lie. Could be uh, something that's a personal experience, for example. I'll give you a minute to do that. And then we're going to guess uh, see if we can guess each other's. Sounds good? Perfect. Sounds good. So here are my two. Um, so one of them is, oh, sorry. I did this wrong. We're going to edit that out. All right. So here are my two. So one of them is I have hyper extended elbows. So that means my elbows are not straight. And then here is I am partially colorblind. So which odd deficiency do you think I was born with? I would not want to judge, so I could pass. <laughs> uh, uh, I guess you have hyper extended elbows is the true, and uh, I'm partially colorblind is false. Yes, that's true. I'm not colorblind at all, and I do have hyper extended elbows. It's, yeah. it's very inconvenient. But <laughs> uh, congratulations, mm -hmm. so that's great. And then uh, show me yours, and I will guess yours. Okay, there you go. I sold my first company while I was 17. Wow. And then the other one, a little bit closer to the screen. Um, I am a stand-up comedian alongside being an investor. Oh, I really hope that's true. Because I love, love, love stand-up comedy. We have the biggest stand-up comedy festival uh, here in, uh, in Montreal. It's actually just down the street from, from my place, yeah. just for laughs. Um, and let me see. I don't remember you performing though. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Montreal. Oh, I can <laughs> still be a stand-up comedian if I haven't. I can still be a stand-up comedian if I haven't performed at Montreal Comic Fest. I, I know, <laughs> but uh, like I was like, but then I would know if one is absolutely true, right? So I. Okay, I do want to go with the stand-up comedian. Is it true that that one is true? Yes, that's true. Yes. <laughs> Do you do stand-up in English by any chance? Yes, I do in English mostly. Oh, perfect. I'm gonna, we're going to find. Do you have a stage name that you can share with our audience? The Fard Guy. <laughs> okay, excellent. So guys, we're going to try and link that below when we can find him and find all of his videos. And uh, right. please leave comments for him as well. I'm sure he would love that. <laughs> There's nothing. So I also, in fact, I need to tell you, Fard means something awesome in Hindi. So Fard oh. is a popular Hindi slang. Okay, so, what is it? Yeah, so that's how I'm called the Farga because yeah, people consider me as awesome. So yeah. Oh, it means awesome. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, that's so clever to to have it to have it you know uh, mean awesome in a different language. I never even thought of that. That's great. Yeah. Great. Oh, super awesome. And so, is there a next step or a event that's happening with uh, with FOD, or um, how can we get a hold of of FOD Network and be a part of it? Yeah. So the next thing, of course, we are doing it for uh, right from the year start is uh, we are starting, uh, we are accelerating our uh, activities with VCs. So not only we are taking our portfolio companies to venture capitalists, but also a lot of new early stage enterprises who are raising capital uh, to venture capitalists across the world. That is something we are also building technology alongside so you can expect far to become a dominant technology player alongside being an investing player as well. Uh, that is something I'm announcing my stand-up comedy shows as well, so, <laughs> <laughs> starting from December. So yeah, good, you excellent. Can up, you can catch up there as well. Uh, yeah, and I accept both Indian INR and dollars <laughs> and Canadian dollars as well. So yeah, <laughs> excellent, excellent. <laughs> Oh, that's beautiful. So guys, we're going to link that below and, um, and I hope you guys uh, reach out to Aditya and also like, like, like his show as well. So thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate you spending this time with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Sydney. And also one thing so I'd like to tell, there's a documentary on my life also being released on Netflix. Watch oh, it and nice. let me know how do you like it. Yeah. How do you find that? Is it on YouTube or where is it released? It will be released on Netflix. On Netflix. 
oh my gosh, congratulations. Mm -hmm. That's a huge feat. So it's like you and then like Kevin Hart and Seinfeld, right? You guys all have biographies released on Netflix. So this, this biography would be a take on the lives of 10 young entrepreneurs in India and how they have defied age and like situations and they've come across and emerged as entrepreneurs. Wow. That is happening and also I'm releasing my book as well, guys. So yeah, do, do, do check that out as well. Great. Uh, that so, book yeah, talk so about then we're going to link the link to uh, his book as well as the, uh, the name of the Netflix show when it comes out as well. So uh, you guys can just check the description below. Thank you.